Hello, welcome to uh, Truman College's uh, YouTube video on how to use the microscope. Uh, this is a compound microscope, and uh, it's a transmission microscope where we, the light focuses or runs right through the specimen. Uh, this is what we use in all our general biology classes and our microbiology classes, and I'd like to show you how to set it up and how to use it. Okay. So first of all, whenever you're working with a microscope and you take it out of the cabinet, be sure to use two hands, one on the bottom and one on top, and support it. Okay. Then, once you come to your table, you can set it down, and we'll plug it in. Turn the light on. Now, before you start, there's a couple of things that I'd like you to, to keep in mind. First of all, most important thing, you really only need your thumb and four fingers. If you're using anything more than that, you're using too much force. And if you're doing that, you need to talk to your instructor because you're probably doing something wrong. So let me just review the uh, parts of the microscope, going from the production of the image to up till it comes up to your eye. So at the beginning, we have the light, uh, light source. And in this case, in the lab med, we have a, a rheostat that adjusts the light. So the way to work with that is to use the least amount of light you can get by with. The more light, the more scatter you have, and the blurrier the image. So we try to use the least amount of light. And we can adjust it with the knob here. Uh, the, the light is then transmitted up into the condenser, which condenses the light, which then focuses the light through the specimen, which would be on the stage, which then goes into the objective lens, is magnified as indicated, and then that image is transmitted to the oculars, and that is magnified X, uh, 10 times. So if you want to know what the total magnification is, you simply multiply the objective magnification times 10. Basically just put a zero after it, and you'll know what the uh, total magnification is. Okay, in order to start, um, what we'd like to do is, first thing, you have your specimen, then using the, the coarse adjustment knobs, and those are the large ones here, we also have the fine adjustment, which is the small one, we can use the coarse adjustment and bring the stage all the way down. Okay, that way we won't uh, risk damaging the lenses. Okay, we'll put the slide on, on top, let the uh, spring close. Now, what we want to do is, Make sure that the specimen is actually centered over the middle of the condenser. Okay? What that does is it allows you to be certain that as you start focusing, you'll actually be focusing on something. Because if your specimen is off to the side, you may be focusing on nothing and uh, you'll have difficulty. So we want to make sure that there's some specimen or you can actually see some color or something in the center of the uh, condenser. All right? Once we have that, the next thing we, we could do, and I'm gonna take my glasses off for this, is we wanna be able to use binox, okay, to use both eyes. And this can be very tricky and very troublesome for most folks. So what I think of it as, as a sort of a pair of binoculars, and what you're gonna to need to do is to adjust the oculars so that they match up with the pupillary distance, the distance of your pupils. The best way to do that is to close this all the way. Uh, so before you start, the best thing to do is to relax your eyes. And the way to do that is to just look at a distant wall. Don't focus on anything and just let your eyes relax and don't focus uh, on anything so your eyes get relaxed. And then keep that relaxed feeling as you work in the microscope. Uh, and then you look into the scope and you find yourself straining, there's something wrong. So we want to keep the eyes relaxed. So what I'm going to do is I look at a distant wall. Okay, my eyes are relaxed and I'll go ahead and uh, put my eyes up to the oculus. Now right now I really can't see much of anything. So what I'll do is I'll put both hands on these oculars and very slowly bring them apart. And it may take a little while. The first time you do this, if you've never done it before, it takes quite a while. But once your brain figures out how to process this image in the future, it will always be much quicker. So now I'm pretty much seeing one image. And once you get that, once you see one image, you can back off and you can take a look at this particular scope. It'll show you uh, the pupillary distance that you have for your eyes. And in my case, it's about 66. So in the future, any other scope I'll use, I can go right to 66 and I'll be able to use this very easily. The next thing we want to do is, still using the low power, I'll go back in and I'm going to use the uh, fine adjustment. I'll adjust this as best as I can by bringing the stage up slowly so I can bring it into focus. Now 
Okay, now I'm in focus. Okay. Now, another feature that on these microscopes is that you can adjust the oculars for both eyes. So if you have glasses and one eye is a little stronger than the other, we can adjust for that. So what I'm going to do in order to, to, to make a use of that, I'm going to just use my right eye. So I'll close my left eye, just look into the right ocular, and I will focus as best as I can get with my right eye only. Okay, and I got a really good image now. I'm using the fine adjustment. Then I'm going to close my right eye and just look with my left eye. And of course, it's really out of focus right now. So to bring this into focus, I'm going to turn the adjustment on the ocular lens to focus that. And now I've got it in focus. Now I can open both eyes, and I've got a really nice image with absolutely no strain, which is what you're after. Uh, another thing to, to do to make sure that you actually are set up properly on a binoc is to, as you're looking at it and you see one image, go ahead and close, say, the right eye and you should see a nice image. Then close the left eye and just use the right eye. You should see an image clear, a clear image. If you end up closing one of your eyes and everything disappears, that means you're actually off. You only are using one eye. And a lot of folks end up uh, doing that. So it's another little trick. Uh, look at the scope. Close one eye, you should see an image. Close the other eye, you should still see a nice clean image. And it should both be in focus. If they're not, you can always adjust a little bit with the ocular adjustment. So once you have that image, then you're ready to, to move up. So if there's something that you're looking for, uh, this is the, the objective to use right now. This is the scanning, and it means you can go ahead and use that to, to look around over the slide. And so I'm going to use the uh, mechanical stage here, and I'm going to move in the x-axis and the y-axis. I'm looking for, in this case, some little dark blue specks, which are going to be white blood cells. So. Um, so I found some and I moved them into the center of the field of view. Okay. So now I'm ready to go to the next power. And the best way to do that is to look at it from look at the scope from the side and very gently swing it into place. It's possible, depending on the lenses, that the stage might be too high, and as you swing it in, you'll actually crush the slide and damage the lens. So just to be on the safe side, as you're switching uh, lenses. Don't do it from up here, do it by looking down from the side. And if you click it into place and you get back up here, they should be almost in focus. Maybe not perfectly, but it should be very close and you might need just a little bit of adjustment on the, uh, the fine adjustment to get into focus. And if that occurs, then the microscope is parfocal and it should be parfocal. If it isn't, uh, raise your hand and have your instructor come and uh, take a look at it. So now I'm, I've got some uh, very good images here. And now again, I could use the X and the Y adjustments to find something that I'm interested in. Get it into the center of the field of view, which I have. I'm, I found a leukocyte. Now that I've got that centered, now I'm ready to go to the high power. And again, I'm going to go down at the side here and make sure that I'm not um, pressing the projective into the slide. You'll find that. Uh, on the high dry, you have maybe only one or two millimeters of distance, and that's normal. But do it slowly. And in this case, it's slightly out of focus, but I can bring it into very sharp focus with just a minimal uh, amount of movement on the uh, fine adjustment. And if you find that the image is a little blurry, one thing that you can do is to decrease the light using the iris diaphragm, which we'll show you later. You'll find that as you decrease the light, the resolving power or the crispness of the image actually improves. So we can decrease the light with the iris diaphragm, and we can also decrease the light with the rheostat wheel and just dim the light overall. And now I have a very clear, sharp image that I can use for uh, uh, for my observations. Okay. So once you're finished uh, observing, it's time to put the microscope away. What you want to do is bring the stage all the way down using the course adjustment and take your time. Again, only your thumb and forefinger. I'll bring the stage all the way down and then bring the objectives back to the low power and you can remove your specimen. And you're really doing this 
uh, for the next person who's using it. When you come up, when you get a, a scope out of the cabinet, it really should be, the, the stage should be all the way down and the low power should be uh, in place. Okay. When you're all done, you can shut the light off. And we'll take the plug out. We'd like you to wrap the cords up very simply, just sort of an S pattern. Yeah. And it fits right in this little uh, hole here. And then as you put it back, again, two hands. One supporting the top and the other supporting the bottom. And then you can set it back into the uh, cabinet. And if you have any other questions, check with your instructor.